Abby Johnson. I am the registered dietitian at the Perimeter Campuses for Georgia State University. This month, we're talking about the importance of sleep. And on the last segment, we talked about some basic tips to getting a sound night's sleep, which included keeping a dark room, trying to drown out any distracting noises, and then keeping your thermostat set at a cool temperature in order to promote better sleep. But today, we're going to talk about how what we eat can impact the quality of our sleep. So the first uh, topic that I want to address is caffeine. We're all students. We all probably drink maybe one or more caffeinated beverage per day. So caffeine is in coffee, soda, chocolate. So it's in a lot of things. Um, caffeine is not necessarily a bad thing, but caffeine acts as a stimulant. As, as a stimulant. And so it blocks out the signals that go to our brain that tell us that it's okay to relax and it's okay to go to sleep. For some people, avoiding caffeine up to eight hours before you go to sleep um, is important for promoting better sleep. So for some people, you have to avoid caffeine up to eight hours before you get in bed in order for it not to interfere with your sleep. That means not drinking coffee, not drinking soda, not having chocolate. The darker the chocolate, the higher the caffeine content is going to be. Um, for some people, can get away with four to five hours before sleep. But on average, the later we get into the day, we should be trying to avoid sources of caffeine because that can interfere with our ability to fall asleep. Um, the next one, which may be a little bit less obvious, is avoiding alcoholic beverages close to bedtime, which may seem counterintuitive. Some people believe that alcohol actually helps you to fall asleep, and for many people it does. The problem with alcohol is that it helps you to fall asleep, but it doesn't help you to stay asleep. So you may initially find that after having a glass of wine or after having a beer, it helps you relax a little bit and you fall asleep, but it actually interferes with the most important kind of sleep, and that's REM, or rapid eye movement. That's where we're getting our deep restorative sleep, and that's how you wake up feeling refreshed. Alcohol interferes with our ability to get into deep REM sleep. So for that reason, avoiding alcohol um, closer to bedtime can be important, and particularly not using it as a means to fall asleep. That's not a good habit to develop. Um, the third thing, so avoid eating large meals before you go to bed. And this kind of follows the same concept as alcohol. Many people can recall a Thanksgiving or a Christmas or a holiday where you ate a large meal and you kind of dozed off on the couch or dozed off in the chair and that made you sleepy. Large meals can do that because you're spending so much energy trying to break down that food. However, much like alcohol, it's not going to promote the best, the deepest sleep or restorative sleep. Your body's working so hard to break down that large meal that you ate that it's not actually allowing your body to do the things that you should be doing while you're in deep sleep, which is recovering from the day, preparing any tissues, and waking up refreshed in the morning. So avoiding large meals before bed is pretty important. Um, limiting the sugar in your food, in your diet, not only immediately before bed, but throughout the day. A high sugar diet can interfere with our sleep. So whether we're having sugar earlier on in the day or later on in the day, it can interfere with our ability to get deep restorative sleep. What sugar does in our system, it raises our blood glucose, so it raises our blood sugar. And the more spikes that you have throughout the day, the more that can interfere with our ability to relax and our ability to fall asleep. They've actually done studies where they compared people that were on higher sugar diets versus lower sugar diets and compared quality of sleep and numbers of, number of hours of sleep. And they've been able to conclude that people that are on lower sugar diets, so more complex carbohydrates, less simple sugars, tend to get better sleep. Um, and then... The last one that we're going to talk about is, um, well, we'll talk about a few nutrients that are involved in better sleep. For this segment, I'll talk about magnesium. On the next segment, we'll talk about melatonin um, and tryptophan. Um, but magnesium is a mineral that we need in our body and that we get through our diet. Magnesium plays a role in supporting that deep restorative sleep that I've been talking to you about. It helps that by maintaining something called GABA, G-A-B-A which is a neurotransmitter that helps to promote sleep. So eating foods that are higher in magnesium can help to promote better rest and better sleep. 
foods that have um, that have substantial amounts of magnesium would be things like nuts. So like I have these pistachios here, um, legumes um, such as garbanzo beans, soybeans, kidney beans, um, and seeds. So sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, those are all excellent sources of magnesium. And that mineral does thousands of different things in our body, but one of the roles that it does that's important to us today is it helps to promote rest and sleep. So that concludes our segment for today. Join us next time and we'll talk more about how food impacts our sleep. Was that good? Yeah.